All right, now I want us to review the utensil activity that we did last class period to mimic natural selection. If you remember, we started off with one quarter of the uh, class having um, <clears throat> forks, one quarter of the class having spoons, one quarter of the class having knives, and one quarter of the class having chopsticks. And we went out into the courtyard where I had scattered some pinto beans and you were responsible within a 30 second time frame picking up as many pinto beans as you possibly could and then I took an average um, across everybody that participated um, to see how many pinto beans you picked up and if you um, personally picked up less than the average then you returned your utensil to me and then um, those utensils that survived got to reproduce. And so if there were forks left over, then more forks got made. And if there were spoons left over, then more spoons were made, and so on and so forth. And if you recall, um, and, and if someone wants to go over to the, the whiteboard and on the left-hand side, just um, have your class periods up top, um, you'll see in our data tables that uh, you know chopsticks and knives did not perform very well and um, by and large forks and spoons did with a slight advantage typically going to the spoon and so what I would like for you to do on page 115 okay is we're gonna look at um, these distribution graphs again these bell curves if you will and I want you to look at the data and I want you to see which of these three graphs do you think fits our class data the best right did we have a stabilizing selection where the average utensil was being selected for did we have disruptive selection where there were two food sources and it ended up causing you know two vastly different utensils to both be um, having an advantage or did we have directional selection where one extreme one utensil seriously outperformed all the others um, I want you to take a moment and for the next 30 seconds or so I want you to turn to someone uh, next to you and then talk it out. And when you hear my voice again, I want you to stop. All right, if you could uh, bring your attention back up to the front, um, what you guys are going to do now is on page 115, up at the top of the page, you're going to put um, your drawing of whichever um, graph you feel fits our data the best. And you know, keep in mind that you know when we were talking about this last class period, it's possible for there to be more than one right answer, um, as in the case with the giraffe necks. Giraffe necks were both directional and stabilizing. So even um, if not everybody in the room agrees, that doesn't mean that we can't all be right. Um, but what I want for you to do at the bottom of the page is I want you to give me a summary. And in this summary, what you're going to do is you're going to kind of uh, summarize what happened in the activity, but you're also going to explain to me why the graph that you chose is the one that fits your um, activity summary the best. Okay, so again, at the top of the page, I want you to have um, whichever graph set you've chosen either directional or disruptive 
or stabilizing. And then at the bottom of the page here, you're going to summarize the activity and then explain why you think the graphs that you chose uh, best fit the situation. And you're going to have about mm, four or five minutes for that. If you find that you are struggling with um, finding things to write about, why not um, talk about the different types of foods uh, that the fork and the spoon and the knife and the chopsticks are best suited for, and then compare those foods with the pinto beans that we tried to collect with our utensils when we were out in the courtyard. Um, and that might go a long way for you know helping you explain why uh, one set or type of utensils outperformed the others. You have about two minutes left. You have about one minute remaining. All right, if you would uh, start wrapping up what it is that you have written in about 30 seconds or so, we're going to move on.